Vince McMahon resigned in disgrace from WWE in the summer of 2022, Triple H stepped up to the plate and there was a lot of talk about what this might mean for many of his favoured pupils. In fact, he immediately began a hiring spree of talent that the company had previously let go. But when you line these names up, it's fair to say that most didn't cause the splash that the head of creative had perhaps hoped for. I'm Cy for WhatCulture.com and these are 10 Triple H guys who must be miserable in the new WWE. Number 10, Karrion Cross. Karrion Cross has struggled throughout his WWE career. In NXT, he didn't fit the mold that the full sale audience were used to. This was even used in storyline when the stalwarts of the brand called out Cross for being all flash and bluster rather than a legitimate threat, but at the very least he was booked as a dominant champion. His runs on the main roster, not so much. Cross said in an interview with Muscle and Fitness that he sees his persona as not that of a human being, but rather a dark energy manifesting as a person, which is some interesting out of the box thinking at least, but could absolutely go badly in the wrong hands. Sure, Triple H struggled to establish Cross on the main roster, but just remember what Vince did to him in 2021. There's almost no hope that Vince doesn't make the so-called Doomwalker either just a regular Joe or a generic spooky supernatural figure. It's possible that Cross's expectation of the kind of nuanced characters that wrestling can create is too high. Be afraid, Cross. Be very afraid. Number 9. Tegan Knox. In some ways, Tegan Knox's WWE journey has been truly hard to watch. Constantly set back by injuries, just as she was gaining momentum, it felt like she had been cursed somehow. She finally debuted on SmackDown alongside Shotzi in July 2021, was drafted to Raw that October, and then released just weeks later. However, a year on, she put pen to paper for a return. As usual, Knox came in red hot by defeating Damage Control, the then women's tag champions, on her first night in a non-title match. Despite not picking up the gold, Knox's return was very welcome and she felt like a fiery addition to the roster. That fire has well and truly gone out with those making the booking decisions and, by extension, the audience. Knox has failed to win a televised match at the time of reading since January. To add insult to injury, she appeared in the Royal Rumble for less than a full four minutes, making her one of the quickest eliminations in the match. Not everybody can win all the time, but being re-signed just to be added to a pool of maybe names must be disheartening. Number 8. The Good Brothers The Good Brothers have been in the business so long and have been so widespread that it's sometimes honestly hard to remember where they're even working. Unless you watch Main Event, you'd be forgiven for forgetting that Anderson and Gallows are currently signed with the WWE since they haven't been on Raw or SmackDown since January. After securing a few wins over comedy tag team Alpha Academy, the pair have done very, very little. There was a short feud with the Judgment Day who beat them so hard that the OC apparently haven't been able to get on television. Since then, they have exclusively worked house shows and dark matches. On the plus side, according to Sean Ross Sapp, the Good Brothers have a special kind of contract that says they don't have to go to a show if they're not booked to work, which must be a massive time saver. However, therein lies the problem. With both pairs of tag belts on one team right now, there is very little for other duos to do. This may mean that the Good Brothers contract might be a monkey paw that leads them to never being on TV again. Number 7. Candice LeRae When Candice LeRae's WWE contract expired in 2022, there were some understandable reports of interest from AEW. Not only is LeRae an experienced and talented worker, she also has a history with all elite young bucks. As such, when Triple H came into power, he clearly did his best to attract LeRae back to the WWE. She redebuted in September 2022, over six months ago now, and has done... Uh, what, precisely? In 2023, LeRae has had just a few televised appearances, which have given her zero chance of generating momentum or taking part in proper storylines. She's a capable pair of hands, but considering that she first signed with the company nearly six years ago in 2017, the Poison Pixie has yet to capture any singles gold. There is one saving grace in that because of this return, Candice got to appear briefly at NXT Stand and Deliver to congratulate her former stablemate Indy Hartwell on winning the NXT Women's Championship. It was a sweet moment that reminded fans of days when LeRae was, at the least, a featured performer rather than just a puzzle piece yet to find a place. Beyond that though, one has to wonder if LeRae will consider the greenness of the grass on the other side if, this far into her career, she continues to find herself underutilized. Number 6. Johnny Gargano When Johnny Wrestling stepped away from NXT, he did so at a time just before the WWE was about to encounter major change. Just months later, the CEO resigned in disgrace and Raw and SmackDown were under new management. Specifically, they were under the control of the man who had so clearly been a fan of Gargano's in NXT. However, Johnny Gargano may be proof positive of Triple H discovering how hard it is to book the main roster. The Rebel Heart has simply not done a lot of substance since his debut last year. There have been great moments 
moments, including temporarily teaming with Rollins in Elimination Chamber, but nothing that has led to a true planting of the flag. It's incredibly telling that Gargano's first WrestleMania weekend since his main roster debut saw him work NXT. Johnny Wrestling has maintained that he's patiently waiting for his moments, but has remarked on the frustration of many of his fans who want to see him work higher level spots on the card. It's hard not to see this as a regression, with Gargano's warm reception in NXT compared to his limp presence on the main roster being night and day. Oh, and his new music sucks, so that's a bummer as well. Number 5. Asuka Whilst it went unsaid, Bianca Belair versus Asuka at WrestleMania was about numbers. Belair had so far not been defeated at the show of shows, a place where Asuka had yet to win a single match. And once the dust had cleared after a very strong bout, those two things remained the same. Asuka is somehow now 0-5 and five at WrestleMania, quite an unbelievable stat, all things considered. It was incredibly telling that Asuka has struggled, through no fault of her own, to put much memorable material together in the last few years. The video package hyping the match relied heavily on footage from years ago when the Empress of Tomorrow was undefeated for around two and a half years. In the wake of this loss, Asuka took to Twitter to respond to a fan who wondered about the superstar returning to Japan. She seemed to downplay the idea, but wasn't shy to describe the women's division in WWE as boring, complete with an emoji that's apparently chocolate ice cream, but it's it's not, is it? The women's division has been a state for a while now, even with Papa H as lead booker. Still, it's hard to feel confident that Asuka's booking will get any better under a returning Vince. Number 4. Eric Young When the 2020 cuts came, Eric Young's name was among the first group. Not that the former TNA champion wasn't great, but because he felt like spare parts going unused it didn't really come as much of a surprise. However, after two years away, Young returned to the company under Triple H's rule in November 2022. Or did he? Because he's reportedly never even been seen backstage, let alone in front of a crowd. Of course, being paid to sit at home can't be too bad, but it wasn't like Young was winding down his in-ring career before he re-signed. He had been consistently active in Impact from 2020 to 2022, winning both the world title and also defending the tag team titles as part of his new stable, Violent by Design. Young told the Metro in June 2022 that he was still addicted to wrestling and that he would only retire from the ring to backstage producing when he felt like he couldn't give 100%. Now, EY is only 43 years old and still going strong, the issue is that time waits for no man. Perhaps Young personally feels as though he has started to slow down, but if that's not the case, then he's losing valuable hours. The fact that he's not been booked is one thing, but him apparently not being seen backstage is truly puzzling and concerning. Number 3. Damage Control Damage Katoral is the most Triple H devised stable around today. While she has been established on Raw and SmackDown for quite some time now, Bailey was a key figure in Papa H's NXT, finding its footing in the first half of the 2010s. Teaming her up with Dakota Kai and Io Sky was an exciting prospect, even more so since they debuted at SummerSlam 2022 to total shock. With this being the first major show of Triple H's career as head booker, the formation of Damage Control was the talking point of the man's desire to push his personal favourite pupils. Whilst their booking has been up and down, they have at least won the women's tag team titles twice and were a prominent part of the Royal Rumble, with stories leading out from there to a major WrestleMania match. Match. Now, whether you think Bailey's recent goodbye tweet is a work or not, the trio do have legitimate reasons to be concerned. With Vince reassuming control, there is a high chance he'll just start putting Triple H's pet projects into the bin. Worse, Vince's renowned pettiness and tendency to sour easily may not do damage control any favours in the long run. Number 2. Bray Wyatt Wyatt's whereabouts are currently unknown, so it's not quite fair to speculate on the situation, but the fact is insiders have given conflicting reports, some mentioning an undisclosed injury and others alleging dissatisfaction with creative. Whatever you may think of his WWE career and his current Uncle Howdy shtick, the wrestling auteur is clearly a man who has big visions for his characters and his storylines. However, almost all of these have ended badly in the past due to poor booking. The Eater of Worlds lost to John Cena when he was red hot, the new face of fear laid down for an undertaker far past his prime, and the fiend needlessly won the world title and then was utterly crushed by Goldberg, just to name a few. So there was hope among some that Triple H re-signing Wyatt might make all the difference. But do you really think his master plan for Uncle Howdy included the Mountain Dew Pitch Black match? It really wouldn't be surprising to learn that he had been feeling sour before the changeover back to the old guard as it was. And number one, Hit Row. Hit Row's return to the WWE is like trying to light a candle that has melted down to its wick. What once burned brightly has gone, it's time to face the facts. During their time in NXT, Hit Row were a highlight of a show that needed stir Rudders. 
Swerve Strickland similarly needed something to get his teeth into. As such, making himself the figurehead of a stable was the right call, and Hit Row's gimmick of actual musicians all banding together was pretty unique. To say that the group's call up to SmackDown is where the wheels fell off paints the wrong imagery. Someone hit the ejector seat on B-Fab, releasing her weeks after their debut, and then the car careened into the side of a mountain and exploded. In just 50 days, the group had arrived and been cut. Hit Row did get a second chance as of August 2022, but without their leader Swerve, who is now working in AEW, they just feel like they're missing something special. Despite the stable actually at least getting to win a few matches on television, they just feel aimless. B-Fab making her debut at the Women's Royal Rumble and being eliminated in 36 seconds doesn't help either. Hit Row found themselves in an unwinnable situation basically twice in a row, and that can't feel good. And that's the list. Let us know what you thought of this video down in the comments below. Which of these Triple H projects are you the most worried about? And of course, let us know of any others that we could have included. Make sure you like this video, share it with your friends, subscribe and hit that notification bell. Head over to whatculture.com for more content every day. I've been Cypher for What Culture and have a good week.